Okay guys, uh, today's video is going to be on P25 Phase 1 C4 FM theory and I uh, wanted to go through uh, from the microphone all the way uh, through the radio to the to the transmitter out and then back to the receiver and all the way to the uh, speaker on the other end and just go through the uh, um, the signal flow and uh, show the different uh, processes happening. Um, the P25 is based around uh, a digital system where uh, instead of sending analog audio you're sending uh, packets of uh, data that have the uh, digitized audio inside it and then after the data is transmitted uh, through the radio the analog audio is recreated at the uh, far end. So um, this uh, this packet system uh, um, um, involves uh, sending like 1,700 bytes uh, at a time uh, for each packet, and they send the bytes over the radio using um, um, a method of encoding where they have four different uh, frequency states um, uh, on the transmitter that. Uh, each each of the four different uh, frequency offsets represent a uh, pair of bits. Um, so, uh, for instance, if the uh, if the frequency is is plus 600, it's going to represent uh, two zeros. If it's plus 1800, it's going to represent zero one. So over here on our diagram here, um, when we're plus 1800 off the uh, the carrier frequency which in my example of 15924 would be 1592418 uh, this 18 up here would represent uh, 01 so um, um, they're using this encoding um, um, process uh, to transfer the uh, the packets of data across um, let's start at the beginning and see what happens uh, inside um, and how we get precisely to the other side. Um, with the microphone audio coming in uh, to start, the, um, the DSP, and that's the digital signal processor, uh, which represents the, the actual DSP chip, the microprocessor, uh, and possibly a side uh, encoding chip. Um, all three, I got them just wrapped together and called DSP. Because uh, different manufacturers are going to have different combinations of uh, hardware. But um, basically what happens is the analog audio coming in is digitally sampled and turned into zeros and ones. And this, uh, this data stream of uh, zeros and ones then goes through a software program uh, called a codec. And it, um, it takes the, the, that stream and... and and squeezes it down to a smaller number of bytes because the original sampling stream contains too much information to send over the radio um, for the channels that were allotted so they have to they have to find a way to squeeze that down and this is what the uh, the um, uh, the MB uh, speech coding does um, and it's uh, kind of a world within itself but uh, they're able to uh, take every 20 milliseconds of speech and, and squeeze it down to 88 bits of information to represent that sound. And what they do is they take, um, they take nine of these 88-bit uh, little uh, frames and they put them together into one into a single packet. And uh, let, me, um, let me bring up the packet here uh, so you can kind of get an idea of how they're doing this. Um, like I said, this packet, it's 1728 bits, uh, 1728 bits uh, uh, long. It takes 180 milliseconds to send this uh, packet of uh, data. And um, it consists of, um, uh, it starts with a header frame and then a synchronization and um, some other, uh, other information like your NAC and your network ID. And then uh, comes nine of the voice uh, um, frames that they have in there. And um, uh, like I said, all together, um, um, we have uh, uh, 
1728 going out every 180 milliseconds. Um, and that's the equivalent on the, for the voice of 4400 uh, baud. And um, for the overhead and parity that you need to run that is another 5200. So all together uh, is a total of 9600 uh, bits per second that uh, these are uh, putting out. So it's like um, it's about five and a half frames, or I should say five and a half of these LDUs um, that uh, the packets uh, per second. It's uh, ex it's exactly uh, 50 every nine seconds. But um, anyway, uh, so your voice information and some other things are contained in each one of these packets, um, and these are sent every 180 milliseconds. There's exactly 180 milliseconds worth, worth of voice uh, inside each one, so you get an idea of uh, of how that works. Now, um, after you get the packet formed, you need to uh, now send it out. Uh, to the radio, and um, they send out the these uh, the seventeen hundred bits two at a time, and uh, they do it every two hundred and three microseconds. And when I say they send them out, what what we do is we take the the transmitter, and we adjust the uh, frequency of it to one of four different levels, depending on which um, um, combination of uh, two bits that we have here. So um, once again, like I said, if it was 1800, uh, this would be one, minus 1800, this would be 1-1. One, one. Now, uh, when the DSP is over here changing frequencies on the transmitter, um, we can't do, uh, because of the nature of how the radio works, we can't do square waves. Uh, we, have to, we, have to, we have to gradually change frequencies uh, from one to the other. Um, there's a lot of um, things involved if you try and do straight hard changes. Uh, don't want to get into that, but anyway, uh, uh, this right here, this part uh, section right here, just to give you a uh, uh, an idea, uh, kind of a reference of back where we're at. This uh, plus 600 and minus 600, um, 0, 0, 1, 0, This would be the equivalent of a 2400 hertz tone at um, plus or minus 600 hertz um, and that's all the uh, the radio would put out the other end or just these series of digits but they they are literally using analog tones to sit to do the uh, bit simulations so it looks like a, a sine wave and it is a sine wave and it looks just like audio and it is just like audio as far as the FM radios that we've always worked on, the analog version. They're just using an analog radio to, to hitchhike a uh, digital uh, signal across. But everything is still analog the, uh, as far as how the radio works itself. Uh, so don't let that get, um, get you confused or get you intimidated. Remember, you can slow all this stuff down and look at stuff at any in given instant in time because a radio transmitter can only put out one frequency on one um, um, uh, one signal on one frequency at a time it cannot do multiple frequencies um, unless you have other transmitters aligned with it or if there's the the strange case of the uh, of harmonic production but that's that's a totally different story on a different uh, uh, subject uh, but anyway, um, the transmitter itself that the receiver is going to be looking at can only be on one frequency at a time at any given moment in time. So keep that in mind as you're wondering how these things work is that they're just doing the frequency modulation. Now, it's, what's most important is, is that the timing issue so that when you go to look at the signal at the other end, you want to make sure that when you're looking at it, it's exactly where the peak is supposed to be and that you're waiting the exact 203 uh, microseconds before you look at the next one. So that's why they need to get in, in synchronicity with each other because in order to get a proper data decodes they need to hit these, uh, these peaks at the right, uh, at the right spot um, as the data stream comes, comes along. So um, 
to go back over it again, we had our microphone audio coming in. We have it changed to zeros and ones. We have it squeezed down to um, 88 bits worth of uh, voice every 20 milliseconds. Let's put in a packet. The packet is now then sent out two bits at a time every 203 microseconds. And the, um, the DSP chip ends up forming a modulation waveform that will now mimic whatever the, uh, the digital input coming into it is. And, um, uh, and it goes into the transmitter just like regular analog audio does and gets frequency modulated out the uh, transmit. So let's now have a look at the uh, far end, the receiver, and uh, do the process uh, uh, backwards here. So um, well, it helps to get the, uh, the right uh, file going. There we go. OK, so um, here we are at the receiver. And, and as the uh, uh, audio was recovered off of the, the detector, uh, it's going to have the same look as it did when it came into the um, uh, transmitter at the uh, distant end. And what the, um, uh, the, the radio is going to end up doing is it's essentially going to make um, uh, a graph within itself, a voltage reading. It's going to do a, a voltage for each one of these four different levels. And as the, um, the synchronicity is developed, and they, um, they go to measure the frequency offset from the center um, and they get these voltage readings, they're going to change each one of those back into the two bits that they originally represented. So the exact process but in reverse from the transmit. So if, you, if they, they stop that instant in time right here and they say, oh, it's uh, plus 600 that uh, comes over here and that represents a uh, zero zero. So it comes over here to its little symbol generator and puts out a zero zero. And it does this every 203 microseconds. So that you're basically mimicking the same exact data stream that you put in at the transmit side, now going back uh, uh, into the DSP in the other direction. Now. Once um, the, um, the data stream starts going back into the DSP, the DSP is going to take that uh, stream and it's going to buffer that, uh, those packets uh, one at a time, the 1728, and then it will deconstruct it and it will remove and pull out the, the uh, audio uh, frames that are inside it, reassemble them, and then send those audio frames over to the MB uh, device or software um, and let that then decode back the, um, um, to the original uh, PCM audio, uh, the, the, higher, the higher sample digital, or it might even go straight to uh, analog audio out depending on what kind of chip or the internal dynamics of it that I have no idea about that and it doesn't really matter. The whole point of the matter is is that you get the analog audio coming back out the, from its, um, that was hopefully in the same original form. Um, but just keep in mind that with the nature of, um, of digital that it can't, um, it can't guess on some things and there are a lot of uh, situations where if it loses its ability to uh, be perfect because it can't uh, get parity to add up and the, um, uh, the there's uh, crashes in the in the data it'll just put flat line out it'll give you no audio out until it can get back into a proper decode mode it can't just uh, follow in so um, anyway um, there's your uh, your basic goes in as and goes out as of uh, the P25. Don't let it um, intimidate you. Um, don't sit there and rely on the um, 
the pre the pre uh, run uh, little programs that they do to look at your symbol deviation and all that uh, good stuff. Those are good things. I'm not saying that you don't need that, but take some time and look at the P25 signals um, uh, from an analog perspective, and uh, look at them with your spectrum analyzers and your and your uh, audio uh, your audio outs and and get a good feel for what they look like from the analog perspective. Uh, but anyway, hope that uh, helps, and we'll talk to you soon.